Hello and welcome to Excel Dashboard Templates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at Excel Dashboard Templates.com where you're sure to learn the latest posts, tips, tricks, and techniques and learn everything about Excel. All right, today I'm realizing I had never showed how anybody how to actually make a thermometer chart that looks like a thermometer. I've got a real cool tutorial out there where you can do a goal chart uh, with a beer bottle or a, a beer mug. And uh, this time I wanted to do one that looks a lot more like a actual thermometer that you can use for sales goals or any types of goals whatever you'd like so let me show you how we go about making it first uh, let's show you how it works so we've got an overall goal we have a measure date that this ends up uh, being the amount that we're showing as of the last time we have updated the chart and then we can go ahead and enter in current sales so let's say we have five thousand dollars of sales you'll see that the amount raises ten thousand in sales keeps going up let's go to twenty three thousand in sales we're pretty close to the top then when we get above twenty five thousand uh, we actually say uh, or show green up above it that we are above our goal so let me show you how we go about making that First, what you want to do is you want to set up your series in such a way uh, that uh, it's easy to chart. First, I'd have our sales goal up at the very top. This is going to be an amount that someone would enter. Measure date, uh, let's put in uh, today's date, 2015. And current sales. Now, current sales is going to be an amount that we enter. So we're going to go ahead and put an, an amount in right now, say about 5,000. Then remaining sales. This is going to equal a formula. Uh, and we're going to make this the section that shows as open. Looks like a white background. And what we want to do is we want to say equals uh, if B4. So if B4 um, is less than B2, then we want to go ahead and subtract B2. I'm sorry, B4 from B2. Else, let's just do zero. So in, in case uh, this is. Uh, in case we are not yet at our goal, this is going to be the amount that is remaining. Now, uh, we also, for the green section, we want to calculate if we are over our sales goal. So we're going to do if equals if uh, B4 um, is, so if B4 is greater than um, or equal to B2, then what we want to do is B4 minus B2, uh, else we're going to do zero for that one as well. So you can see we're not yet above our sales goal. Once we go above it, um, we should have $1,000 show up down there as well. Um, finally, we want to create an, a space or an area for that thermometer bulb at the very bottom of our thermometer chart. And uh, typically what I'll do is I'm going to say this is equal to the uh, negative amount because we're going to have it go below our zero line. Because we're always going to start at zero for our thermometer and then try and rise up from there. And we're going to go ahead and look at our overall sales goal. And we're going to go ahead and divide that by something like, say, uh, the number two. Um, so this is going to set a negative range that we can put the thermometer bulb. And I'll show you how we do that here in a second. OK, now that we're all set, what we want to do is we want to highlight not the entire range. We just want to highlight from the measure date down through the thermometer bulb. We want to go up to our insert ribbon. And we want to create a stacked column chart. So let's go ahead and do a stacked column chart from our insert ribbon. And as you can see, let's go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. We've got a number of different series that we've created. Now, we want to uh, switch the rows and have these actually stacked. Uh, you can read more about this in my blog. I'll put some links in the show notes as to why Excel is doing this. But we're going to go up to our design ribbon after clicking on the chart. Go to your design ribbon. And on the right-hand side, you'll see switch column or rows. So we have something that looks a little bit like a thermometer chart here. But uh, we need to get our series in the right spot. And the first thing what we need to do is we need to get this bottom series. And you can see as we are clicking around, this bottom series is our thermometer bulb. We want to move that to the secondary axis. So uh, you can um, click on it, uh, do format data series, uh, right click, or you can double click on it and it'll bring up your format data point. So it's important that it says format data point. And we want to move that to the secondary axis. Let me move this off to the side because we're going to need this here in a little bit. Now we have moved our secondary, uh, or we've moved that thermometer bulb to the secondary axis. We do not need the secondary axis, vertical axis uh, amounts. So let's click on it and hit our delete key. 
This is going to push the series now that's on the secondary axis back uh, into the same range that we have over on the left on the primary vertical axis. And uh, instead of trying to match up the two axes, we just delete it and it'll set it right in line of where we need it. But it is important that it's on the secondary axis, so it's showing up as a different series for one of the future steps that we're going to do. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some of our other series here. Uh, first and foremost, um, what we want is the current sales. Uh, this series, we want this all to be red, except for when we are um, above our goal. Then we want that to be green. So our current sales, we want to double click on it. Do It does format data point. We want to go to our fill options. In our fill options, we want to do a solid fill. And we want to change the color of this to red. Let's do that red accent. Now it matches our remaining sales. Now, remaining sales, it is not um, an actual chart uh, series that we want to show in full red. We want this to fill in with white because it's future sales, um, but we want to give it a border, and this will give us the outline of our thermometer. So let's go ahead and do solid fill on this one, and instead of red, we want this one to be white. But we also want this to have a border. So if you scroll within your format data series, um, we're going to go over here and we're going to give it a solid border. And we're going to pick that same red color. And I want to give it about a three-point width. So let's do, say, three. Gives us a nice width there. Um, same thing with the, uh, that second series. Um, in order to uh, match it up, our, remaining, our, our current sales, we want to give it a border as well. So do solid line choose that red amount and then let's uh, go ahead and give it a three point width so now that that series looks all the same so you can see we've got five thousand dollars worth of sales and we have twenty thousand dollars of remaining sales so that's that's great and wonderful but uh, let's go ahead and move our amount above uh, let's do 26,000 you can see that's where that green series is going to be and if your series is not green double click on it Format that data point fill in line options. Do a solid fill. And let's change that to green. Make sure it's going to be green. Um, and then we want to give it a border of a solid line as well. We're going to choose that same green. This way it's got the same thickness and width of the uh, bottom series as well. And we're going to change the width to 3 as well. All right, so now we have our chart pretty much set except for... Uh, uh, one other thing, let's go change our values and say we have about $3,000 worth of sales. But you can see we need to add this bulb down here at the bottom. Um, and before I do that, let's highlight the horizontal axis by clicking on that date of 11, 11, 11. Let's go up to your home ribbon and let's change the fill, or I'm sorry, the text color um, on your home ribbon to a white. And let's make it bold and we'll increase the font a little bit so you can know when our sales were active. All right, so let's go ahead and show you how we make that bulb for the bottom of our thermometer chart. What I want you to do is go out anywhere in your worksheet, go up to your insert ribbon. We're going to insert a shape, and we're going to insert this oval shape. Now, I had another uh, tutorial where I showed you how to make a perfect circle, and we're going to go ahead and do that here. What you want to do is you want to hold your shift key down, and you can make a perfect circle. Now, that circle is going to need to be, uh, we're going to need to change the format on it, we're going to change our shape fill to that same color that we have in our column chart. And we also need to give it either no outline or an outline um, so that it matches and it shows up looking like a bulb. Next, what we want to do is we've got to make that little stem of the bulb uh, to match what we have up above. To do that, go back to your insert ribbon, go to your shapes, choose the rectangle. And uh, let's just go ahead and put it anywhere we want. Once again, to make a perfect rectangle you can, uh, or square, you can do uh, the shift key and just sort of drag down. And now we have a perfect uh, little square. So let's, let's go ahead and do it like that. And uh, um, what I want to do is I also want to go to my format ribbon for this shape. And I want to fill in that red color and an outline of the same red color so that it matches. Now, um, if you're off just a little bit, when we do this final step, it will not line up to our upper column. So we want to make sure this is perfectly aligned to the center of the circle. You can do that by clicking on your rectangle, holding your shift or your control key down, and clicking on that circle. And then if you go up to your format ribbon, over on the right-hand side, you're going to have an align option. We're going to want to align center. Now we have it aligned in the center. 
Uh, and I'm going to move it down a little bit further because we want just a little bit of a stem coming out of that bulb. We don't want a lot. And let's recenter it just in case I moved it off a little bit. So now that we've got our thermometer bulb set up, we want to group these two shapes. So click on one and then hold your shift key down or your control key down and click on the second shape. Right click on that, those shapes and do group and click on the group option. So now we've created a grouped shape. We can copy this grouped shape. We can go into our chart. We want to select that uh, uh, thermometer bulb series that we have in there. You can right click and, uh, well, it doesn't look like you can do paste there. I'm going to do control V, so I'm just going to click on that purple one. Do control V, and you can now see that we have our bulb in there and uh, matching pretty good, not too bad. What we want to do is though is we want to match it up to the same width that we have uh, for our other series. Uh, so to do that, click on your series on the primary axis, open up your format data series, go to your series options, and we want to change our gap width to something I don't know around 300% maybe something to that effect. And let's take a look at it. Pretty darn close. Hard to tell if it's uh, off just a little bit or not. So I think we're probably pretty good. Uh, if you need to, you can you can. Uh, play with that a little bit until you get it a little bit more spot on and, and where you really, really like it. Uh, but uh, that should be, so let's try like say 270, let's go 272, right? Oh, a little off, there we go. Uh, get a little closer. There, that looks pretty spot on to me. So now we have our thermometer all set up. The only thing we need to do is potentially get rid of our grid lines. Also, uh, we would want to modify our number format for our columns. So what I'm going to do is uh, first I'm going to click in the chart somewhere, click on the plot area. You can see these handles come up and I can go ahead and shrink this up a little bit, get a little closer uh, in on the action. I may need to then adjust my gap width here as well. Uh, let's uh, continue to shrink that gap width just a little bit more. That looks a lot better. Now, once you click into your chart, click on your vertical axis, we're going to go into our uh, series options. Very bottom is the number, and we want to create a custom for category. And in this custom category, we want to change the format code. We want to do a semicolon, um, another semicolon, do the dollar sign and zero. And uh, we're going to add that to it. And you notice our negative numbers go away. So what this is, this is doing the positive numbers, the semicolon, how does it treat negative numbers? And then thirdly, how does it treat any zero number? Now that we've added that as a custom number format, you can see we start out at zero and we're going to keep climbing up. So if I type in 20, uh, let's say 20,000 total, uh, our thermometer chart is right there on 20,000. And once we go above 25,000, which is our goal, uh, we should then see that we are above goal and uh, we're, we've, we're into the green. So it's a great way to easily create your own thermometer chart. Uh, you too can do it within Excel. Appreciate you stopping by my video channel. Also head on over to my blog so there's you can find other great posts and tutorials. Also consider subscribing to my video channel so you're sure to get the next post delivered directly to your inbox. Thank you.